real thing that revolutionized the edibles industry was lab testing. Without lab testing, there's no way to know that you've got this precise 10 milligram dose. So I want to talk a little bit about dosaging, dosage. I want to talk about how patients can know what their right dose is. And also, what type of public service announcements and educational campaigns would be successful in you know, truly informing the public you know, with scientific facts and reasons. I know that a lot of you have launched your own educational campaigns and that the state has several as well. Um, so please speak to the kind of messaging that you feel is effective. And um, for this question, I would like to start with Tim and then pass the mic down. So it does start with good business practices. Um, Mark Aha, we started uh, CannabisIsSafe.com, and it's a generic site just to go to. You can get information that points you to poison control, basic information. Um, the state of Colorado has come out with some, some approachable PSAs. I think it's a good start. Um, we like to call them private PSAs, too, that you can do at home between your family, your friends, your coworkers. Educate them what cannabis truly is. Um, a lot of people still, it's reefer madness and it's the devil weed, but we need to spread education. We need to, all you guys from out of state, like, you're, what was it, Chef uh, Peyton? Yesterday? Yeah, Peyton Curry was here yesterday. This yeah. one was packed for that yesterday, and anyone who sat in that has more information on edibles, on cannabis, than 99% of the rest of the country. And to take that information home and spread it, I think is, is invaluable. My uh, logo is the uh, state animal, the billy goat. So I play around with it a little bit for the novice consumer and I have a don't raise and drive on my packaging. On top of that, I'm also the chair of the Cannabis Business Alliance and we have an amazing edibles advisory. We came up with a start slow, go low. And go slow. Go slow. Go start low, go slow. I've obviously been consuming too. Um, it is poor 20. Um, so, yes, start low, go slow. Um, what we did with that, though, is we printed out, what, like 100? 250,000. Yeah, 250,000 of these 3 by 5 cards and gave them out to all the MIPS manufacturers in the state to then hand out to their dispensaries. And it's this cute little 3 by 5 card. It's got information on the front and the back of it. And I think something that's pretty amazing with the state of Colorado is the Colorado Health Department has started the Good to Know campaign, which is pretty amazing. And much like Tim was saying, that then starts the conversation at home with children, and especially teenagers under the age of 21, because this has been in the black market for so long, you now can have conversations with your children about how this is not meant for you until you're 21, and how to responsibly consume and store your products. I can't say that enough, because accidental ingestions are something that do happen, especially with the candies and the cookies and the cakes. So I would just add to that, uh, talking about bringing it into the home. I'm a parent of three teenagers, and a lot of people ask me, how did you teach your kids? Uh, they're successfully surviving with a mother who's in the cannabis industry and uh, very successful. They're, they're extremely educated. And to this, I always tell the parents, know your kids. You know them. Each child is going to be different on how this education is going to go. But it's going to go. You're going to open the door to this conversation just like you will for sex and other um, drugs, and in my house, sugar. I demonize sugar, I can't stand it. And But this is a conversation that we have to have with the kids. And for me, it was just beginning it, and then finding out that my scientific, he's a chemistry major now, so he needed the science. And this was early that I discovered that he didn't just accept the fact that this was a picture of cannabis. He wanted to know exactly what is cannabis, Mom. And so there's a plethora of information. Me, as just a mother who's involved in cannabis, spent time researching and finding. I actually found a video game that you play from a university. And you sat, I sat with my son, and we played the game of what was the rat addicted to. And then it shows you what the rat was addicted to and what it does to the brain. Now this was a scientific child who was craving serious information about marijuana. He's 19 now, he's an expert and uh, not afraid of it, considers it a good thing. That's another um, message that I like to pass out to parents, and we've heard that before. Don't demonize marijuana. It's, it's a non subject, if you will. Uh, I, don't, I, I think of it as a positive thing personally. 
uh, and that's how we think of it in our family. But it's not a forbidden fruit kind of aspect of th something that they can never have. So this conversation obviously can go on and on. And just to keep this short, the door stays open once you open it to have the conversation with your kids. Find information. Figure out what your child wants to know. If they're like my 14-year-old daughter, she, she can't stand talking about it. It's such a non-issue for her. She's sick of seeing it and, uh, and, and hearing about it on TV, and, and she's over it. She just wants to move on. But she also is very informed and educated, and should a situation arise that might be sketchy, she could clearly handle herself. Last thing, because we are edible manufacturers, one thing that we always remind, and Jamie has touched on again and again, was the safe storage. So for my kids, when they were babies, you teach this anyway to a baby, not to eat something from a stranger. Well, it's the same lesson in high school. Don't eat anything that came to you in a Ziploc bag, that you have no idea who made it, where it came from, what is in it. It's that simple. Don't eat it, even if your friend tells you, I swear, dude, it's this, or whatever. I'm a celiac, I never eat anything unless I know what their ingredients are because it can seriously hurt me. So these are parenting messages that we've tried to pass on, and I hope that helps answer the question. Oh, I just love that the, the tone and mood around cannabis has shifted so much in this country that now the teenage kids are like, Mom, I don't want to hear about pot anymore. <laughs> You normalize it, it loses a lot of its allure, and uh, you don't have these perceived problems. Um, I do want to touch a bit on the educational campaigns and the, the start low, go slow idea. So what is low and what is slow? It's important to know that it's 10 milligrams and then wait two hours. And that is for a first time consumer. If you know your dose and you've been slowly working up your tolerance, maybe you can handle 50 milligrams, maybe you can handle 100. I've seen people with incredible tolerances. And it's also important for medical patients and for people who use it every day to replace pharmaceutical painkillers, sleep aids. You can really build up a tolerance pretty quick. So it's important to know also how to make these foods at home because you don't want to be going out and purchasing a sugary, fatty, giant brownie to eat every day when you can just simmer it into butter and oil and add it to the regular healthy foods that you're already consuming.